Professor Samuel Braga, the Barambolo, the original Barambolo, first guy to do it, to develop it. Black belt world champion. I think you've won, like, how, how many times have you won a, like, a world championship? The black belt with the gi. In the black belt, the gi adult, I won three times. Um, I won a no gi. And, um, you know, master works several times and uh -huh. color belt as well. Yeah. But those are many achievements right there. Yeah. Always, uh, like, ridiculously technical. And it's been, it's been like, been amazing seeing you come up and you were like, I remember like people, us doing takedowns in uh, Jacqueline's school back in the day in Belo Horizonte. Yeah. And uh, I remember somebody would try, try to throw you and you would land like a cat on your feet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think it was too light. So he did. when they flip me, I would always spin twice. <laughs> people were like, man, this guy doesn't go down. <laughs> and you always had to like overcome compensate, right? Because of the weight, yeah. you're always a lighter weight. You did the rooster weight, right? Yes, I did the rooster weight for rooster the longest weight. time. Yeah, yeah, the lightest weight, you know, in jujitsu. And you're always going like, but Bella Rosancho always had like monsters, big guys, right? Yeah, and my way it came up in the rank, it was like, um, it was kind of good and tough at the same time because uh, majority of people always outweighed me at least um, 40 pounds. And at the time, I was the, the lowest rank the gym and the mm -hmm. majority of people were like all, all blue belts you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i felt like um it was really tough in the beginning you know you know how it was back in the day that was like no such a thing hey let's take it easy in this little guy you know they just want to make sure that you're going to stick with it if you're tough enough and we're going to stick with it with jiu-jitsu how did you how did you start what was your what was your what was your story how did you uh, how did it begin for you so for me my start was basically more likely I want something to be an outlet for my stress as those who can have a lot of stress at school, SATs, you know, it's a big yeah. deal in Brazil. So I was preparing for those in... in what's, uh, the, what's it called, the, the SATs? test? SATs. No, but the, in Brazil? The vestibular. Vestibular, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. vestibular is really, you know, there's a lot of a competition. It's a you know, highly competitive test. Yeah. And for me, you know, everybody in your whole family put pressure on you. See, wait, what are you going to do? What Are you going to... How you gonna you that that's a like crucial time in your life in Brazil. So, so I want something to to be like um, really good to channel all the energy and all the the, the stress. And and then I started watching the UFC and you know mm -hmm. Royce Grace inspired me. You know being the smallest guy there. You know I'm small, so I was like, man, that's what I need to do. You know and that's what I I wanted to do. So then I started watching, then I learned about jiu-jitsu at UFC. And then I started to watching, because at the time you didn't have like the availability of footage as we do right now, you just go type YouTube, something. YouTube, yeah. yeah. YouTube. Before YouTube, right? Be way before We were the last, uh, before the Matrix, right? Yeah, the <laughs> Matrix. Got put no, into the Matrix. You all disconnected <laughs> at the time. <laughs> and uh, it was fun because you have to like get VHS from your friends and you know, was really you have to network a lot to be able to get some footage of tournaments. By the time I know I have no I started just so I didn't have those footage avail available. So one day it was a sport TV in Brazil, mm. and they were like doing a rerun in the World Championship. I was like, man, that's what I need to watch. I want to watch, and it was in the gi. So mm. I had no clue what's going on. I saw two guys in in their gi. But what year was it? Nin uh, I think it was like uh, the first one. I remember because it was. Uh, I remember there was ninety nine, I think. I think uh, ninety nine. What think. matches do you remember? Which I remember saw? that I think I also should I should I watch it. It was like Dracorino and Hoyler, I think something okay, like that. Okay, okay. And it was an epic match. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And I could not. It was on Sport TV. That it was on Sport, Sport TV. TV. Yeah, okay. it was like you know in the evening they do some reruns right, sometimes right, right, on right. Saturdays nights. Yeah, yeah. And I was so excited about to finally be able to watch the pure jiu jitsu. And I was like, I don't have a clue what's going on, honestly. But uh, it was really enlightening, and I was like, okay, I want to do this, you know. So I start. At the time was summer break, you know, mm. in Brazil. Yeah. It's like right at the beginning of the year. I was like, man, I'm gonna prepare myself. Summer breaks the opposite, right? Because yeah. it's south of the equator, so you think here it's like June, July, June, July, but there it's like January, December, January. Yeah. February. February. So it's a it's, it's a long break, you know, and you take from the school. So I was like, man, I'm gonna take advantage of now. And I'm gonna try it out. So I try to prepare myself, you know, in quotes there. Uh, but it did not help at all. You know how it is, man. You, I, I ran, I was running, I was doing swimming. 
I was running, swimming, I was biking, I was doing everything I could to get a, bad, a good cardio. And my first class was, an, you know how it is, man. You get gassed out really fast. People like to say, like, uh, like oh, I need to get ready to go to do jiu-jitsu, right? Oh, there's but, no such a thing. But you just got to go and do jiu-jitsu. <laughs> it's the whole car is so different. You know? yeah, yeah. And you, like, think, oh, man, I'm ready. I mean, you know, you think you're in a good shape or you're not. It doesn't matter what you do, you know. Um, it's a totally different um muscle group to you work and, and is it is it the same type as a cardio and isometric and it's like lifting weights all combined you know techniques that you don't know yet right yes. so your nervous system's not you're not sure what's going on what's happening right yeah you like breathing holding your breath where you're not supposed to and you then just get you know holding your breath for a long period of time because you're trying to push the person as hard as you can away from you and does not help you know and then it's like a lot of the uh, learning, you know, the first, like, you look, that's one thing about Jiu Jitsu I think like the most is like, uh, Jiu Jitsu is a really humbling sport, mm. you know, like, it's a humbling sport, like, you know, you know, and that's one thing I learned right off the bat. Right off there. the bat. It was like, you know, you think you're all prepared, it's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm good to go. And then you go there and get humbled really well by, you know, I mean, honestly, Jiu Jitsu, if you, if you overlook, you know, even if you go there and somebody say, hey, roll with this female. You better be make sure that you do it strategically. Hold the per just hold her down. Don't move much because if you you try to do use a power, a sheer power, and try to overpower a, uh, even a woman, you're gonna get tapped out. You know. Yeah, crazy, I interesting, right? How that. Uh, yeah. This technique, right? The technique it's, it's amazing, and I remember that because vividly because I it, you know and when I was training, there's this there was a girl there, you know. And this girl, every person start jujitsu, she up their ass. You know, they do it on purpose. I don't know what it was, just to show technique, how jujitsu is effective. You know, it's not about strength. So I saw the one guy before me there, and he actually quit. Right, you know, he could not handle that. It's hard for somebody to why you just so humbling. You know, it's hard for you to comprehend. You know, you're gonna comprehend, go, huh? comprehend that a, a person much smaller or a female. And you're gonna come forward like trying to smash them, you get triangle right away, mm. and that's it. It's over. It doesn't matter how strong you are. You're not gonna get out of that triangle and still locked, you know. Yeah, interesting. And just also like humbling, right? Like you're like, I got humbled right away. Yes, that was like right away. It was like it was a wake up call there, you know. And I think I don't know if how you feel about it, but uh, what do you think about like how it just it changes your mindset, so you're more open to learning and. I felt like, makes yeah, you, makes you. it felt like, you know, I mean, I'm really, I've never been a strong guy in the first place, you know, uh, I was always, a, always being a nerd, you know, I always do a lot of books and, you know, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd, you, you, you know me well, I was, I spent all day, I was, I was learning more today, yes, <laughs> you know, I was actually watching uh, prof, a Professor Albert class here trying to learn, you know, I'm always learning, that's the, yeah. only, that's the first thing I hear, I'm learn, also here to learn, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm watching the class, I'm watching everything, trying to learn as much as I can, and I'm always learning, I, I love to learn, and, and then it was a, such a learning experience, uh, watching like the game develop, right? For example, with the close guard. I learned about the close guard, and I realized, well, watching the other people was like. What's, what was the first school you went to? It was Eric Wanderley. Eric Wanderley school. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was funny because that place was so hot, man. It was in São Bento. It was São Bento? It was really near by my house, and at the time I knew I, want, I knew two things, right? I wanted to be part of the Gracie. At the time, you know, be a Grace family, whatever. Yeah. And, the lineage, yeah. And I wanted to be also with a, somebody that's, you know, is a high level person, you know. So I look at Draculino and I look at Van Eric. And then at the time, you know, there's a little bit of price difference, you know, it's like I was just trying. I was like, man, I want to go the, with the, the cheaper route. To, so this way, the investment is not so high, you know. Mm. And so my, I asked my dad to sign me up, you know, he got me a gi. And I'm told this, if you, when you wear the gi the first time, you're gonna see a difference, you know, from like radical clothing and the gi, right? That's one thing that caught my attention as well. Um, another thing is, it was in Brazil, there is no AC, there's nothing, bro. Mm -hmm. You know how it is, you've lived that's there why, before. That's why it's cheaper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know, there's like a, <laughs> no, I don't know how to translate that. 
that thing, it gets hot. It's like being a sauna, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like sweating like crazy. And I was like, well, I learned about the close guard. I'm gonna hold this purse as long as I can, a close guard, that's all I did. And because I was really strategic, I was being strategic, I played a lot of games, and I read a lot of books about strategy. So I was like, I figured out that close guard is a place that I could hold people. And the longest I hold would be a win for me. So they put me to because most of the guys you were, you I mean you competed at rooster weight, so almost everybody was bigger than you, right? That you bigger. Can, Everybody was trained bigger. with. Yeah, I was trained with. It was all bigger. Everything at least a lightweight, except, except this girl. She was also heavy, but like not as heavy as the guys. I believe that she was like pound wise. I think she was one fifty five. Mm. You know, she was like a big, big girl. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for female, one fifty five is actually a strong girl. And um, and all of the time I was one fifteen, so I know. How, how old were you at the time? I was like seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, uh -huh. sixteen, seventeen, and um, and I felt like I didn't have no, as far as advantage of physically, I had no physical attribute that could. So you used your brains. You used like yeah, strategy, so that's tactics. All I did. That's all I did. You know, it's like I was like I'm, I held them and I brought them to my chest, breaking the posture. That's all I did. So I held her in my guard for the longest as I could. Mm -hmm. And I watch like UFC, you know, give you like a little bit of idea. So I shoot for a triangle, go back, shoot for a triangle. That's the only thing I knew, you know, watching Hoist Grace. You know, my brother and I would like um, watch a lot of the UFC, review the tapes. Uh. You know, and the only thing I knew was the triangle because watching UFC and, and grappling my brother a little bit because you wanted to join it. So he was like, man, you have to be ready, man. You know, so anyhow, didn't help much, but at least give you like a general idea of what I had to do there. What the guard was, how what the you guard feels. was, and that's what I did. You talk about strategy. You like to read a lot of strategy, strategy tactic books and things like that. What are some? What are some books? What are some? You know, I think like the books things? like uh, that everybody should be. There's three books in my my I think my life changed a lot after I read them. One is Five Rings from Musashi Miyamoto mm -hmm. Musashi. One is uh, Art of War. Mm -hmm. and, Sun Tzu. Yeah, Sun Tzu. Another one is how to influence people, right? How to influence people, Dale Carnegie, and make how, friends. How to, how to win friends and influence people, people by Dale Carnegie. Dale uh -huh. Carnegie. That's one of the books that I like, think that I wouldn't probably read it again today, tonight, honestly, when I'm a bit, a bit chilling here, because I think those three books are like, essential for someone to be like, you know, to be kind of successful and, and take uh, the right approach, you know? I think they I heard the the Art of War. They used to they used to make uh, the from the Harvard Business School read the Art of War. Yeah. The Sun Tzu. What is some? There's a there's a I remember like there was a give clear commands. If you give clear commands to like you know the soldier, and they you know they disobey, you know if the general gives gives clear commands to the soldier, and they don't follow the directions, that you kill the soldier, right? But if yeah. the general didn't give clear commands, then you. Then you cut the general's head so off, right? Head off, yes. So, <laughs> you know, so I look at it like you're, in, you know, whoever's in the leadership position, and myself included, right? If I, man, that's on me, right? I didn't, I didn't, yeah. I didn't give clear directions. I wasn't clear. That's on me. That's my fault, right? And yeah, taking responsibility. Essentially. Yeah, and there's so many principles. There's some. Are there some other ones that kind of, you know, that off the top of your head that you? Oh, uh, there's a, like uh, the thing about jujitsu that took me the most is to be how the general has to be like really adapt, right? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm saying by that is that I have to adapt to the circumstance. So my jujitsu I, I think is really fluid and not trying to force things. Mm -hmm. So I try, I try to adapt to the circumstance whether my majority of my opponents are stronger, they try to impose their will and I try to be fluidly adapt and to be able to attack at the, more, the time. And I'm always like the one thing is like, this is really important about that is Somebody, when the, the, for example, the, North, the thunder, think about like, it's, I read a lot in Portuguese, so it's basically everybody can hear the thunder, you know? Hear the thunder? Uh -huh. Yes, because it's loud, right? Uh -huh. So there's no, there's no uh, wind in that, right? Because everybody can hear thunder. So when you say you attack, if you attack like the thunder, everybody can knows, can foresee your attack. You're telegraphing it. You're, you're telegraphing. Telling, you're, you're. So the thing is for them is to be like, I forgot the right words, but it's to be really smooth, essentially translating to the to, to the jiu-jitsu. Your attacks should be never, your 
expected by your opponent. Mm -hmm. When they at the least expect, you attack. And that's what I'm trying to do with my jiu-jitsu. Sometimes I get really fluid in my, in my defense, and the guy comes really strong. When he comes really strong to, to smash or get my guard, that's when I attack. Yeah, you surprise them with uh, yeah. yeah. You're expecting that, and you're already oh, yeah. That's Especially with the ahead. wrestlers, you know, like one thing that I tried to use this one a good example. Of, like I have a lot of wrestlers, right? And if I sit up, right, if I'm doing no gi with the rest, if I sit up, right, and they know I'm in position of attack, so they will not engage my guard. Because you live now, you live now, and you've been living in Tennessee for for how many uh, years now? Twelve years. Twelve years, yeah. yeah. So. You've, a lot of wrestlers, a lot of, right? Yeah, you have wrestlers, you have like a lot of big people there too. Mm. You know, like when I came to- Country. Yeah, some country boys there. They're like farm fed, <laughs> they're Rest strong. Fed, yeah. Um, but, um, but it's the phenomenal, you know, like, um, so that's one thing that I did, you know, when I came to the United States, just in general, the approach of like, every time that I'll sit up, especially by my hand rank, people just not engage my guard. Mm. But when I lay down and, feel like my I dropped my guard, but I haven't. I'm just waiting for the moment the guy engaged my guard to be able to set up my attack. Mm. So how did how did the you know so you started you Eric, you went to Draculinos and then how did you start to develop your Delhi Heva, your Baron Bowl? How did that how did that come about? So when I was a white belt, it was this guy, you know, he's he was actually one of the guys that he was not as big. He was like uh, featherweight at the time, and he was a blue belt. He was already competing in like a lot of big tournaments. At uh, and This is uh, at Eric's. Uh, Eric's. I was a white belt. I was like a, two, a month or two in jiu-jitsu, and I was picking everybody's brain, essentially, mm. you know, trying to learn as much as I could. And he, this guy was doing the La Riva, and I, because he was the smallest there, he was the only featherweight there. And I was like, man, I have to learn what this guy's doing because he's being a f he was sweeping people. Mm. So I was like, man, what are you doing there? He was really nice, man. I have to be give it to him because a lot of times you. What was his name? His, his nickname was Ete. Ete. Et e e e e he was an ugly dude, e but he was a nice guy. Super e nice. He started you on the Dilly Hiva path. He started. He pa started a path. path uh -huh. Yeah. So I asked him, and he showed to me. It was like the basic sweep. You know, get the sleeve and you lean, make them uh, tilt them forward. So. I felt like amazed by that. And it, I felt like, because I was doing the, uh, not the, I was doing Spider Guard. Uh, Eric showed me the Spider Guard. And it was just, I was just having a hard time, you know, with it. And, but the Dela Riva was good because the guys would bring his knee forward, trying mm. to smash him in a half mm -hmm. guard. And it was a lot of opportunity there. You know, I was small, I was able to get in fast and get to my position. So I started doing Dela Riva then. That was my, my go to move every time. It was an open guard. You're able to use use their pressure against them the to pressure be able pass, to move yeah, off of it. Off of that, yeah. So I really like that. So I was using a lot. That's when I start. And then, but short times I get really good because that's all I did. You know, when you have you want one uh, one one tricky pony, everybody start like pay attention. What are you and doing? And stop you from doing it. So they start up doing by they will not even engage my they like have a forward. They will take a back step. This is not. Uh, on the, but then get more advanced, you know, because the training with the guys are advanced, more like close to the blue belt. Eight months of jujitsu, kind of, mm -hmm. seven, eight months of jujitsu. People start freaking it out. I was like, I'm going to take a step back. So it starts struggling with that. So I was like, well, how to find a solution for this, right? So I was watching a lot of tapes, footage of people, and, and noticed the guys kick backwards. You know, they go just go kick backwards. They trap their arm. So I'll get the, fr the front arm. Mm. If the guy take a step back and post the arm on the mat, I'll trap the, the sleeve and mm -hmm. I'll kick them backwards, you know, the opposite uh. side. So if they come forward, I sweep them forward. If they go back, I sweep them forward because the weight is backwards. So I start doing that. And then you know how it is, man. Over time, people start figuring it out. So that's when I start doing the bare bolo because I start doing the rock check, tilting back and forth, mm -hmm. back and forth, they start exposing the back because they'll hide the arm from me. So I could no longer get an arm grip, but I'll get the bug grip or the belt the grip. Hip, yeah. yeah, control the hip, trying to get something. You know, I was trying to grab something so I can create more leverage and then start doing that. And you're like, hey, wait, this now they can't even put pressure on me anymore. They just can't so, smash me. So it was great because I'll get, the fact you get underneath someone, there's less pressure on top of you, you know. 
is like is odd as it sounds, but when you get somebody bigger, you can get underneath the axis, you get like you have more leverage, you know, uh, and you get a less smashed. So that's what I was doing. And at the time, I was training at Draculino, and and Draculino and Eric Brandelay at the time with my, mm-hmm. my blue belt. I was training at both. Um, back uh, Jacqueline I trained a lot at noon it was really the, the biggest yeah. uh, train session you know the most famous for the competitors to be there I will train there at the time I already like did well on my SATs too so everything was going well so that your was par- your parents allowed you to keep keep your practice schedule yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so my dad was happy I did well on my SATs I was uh, I accepted you know and so um, then the, then it was like such a relief, you know. Everything started like falling in place. place, you know. Uh, but it was like one of my 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 best time I think in my life because, I mean, you don't realize sometimes, you know, when you're happy, you know. You, I'm sure that you're gonna say the same thing five, ten years from now, you know. You sometimes you're so happy, you know, you just don't come to realization. You know? mm-hmm. Simple things in life, you know, makes can makes you happy. Just the fact that, you know. We, you have, you know, I think it's important. You have your family. You have, like, you know, friends. And you have something to to look for, like jujitsu. You know, the time you have, like, a good commodity, you know. Community. Community. Tough training partners. And tough training partners. And you know, challenges. And challenges. And so, for me, it was, like, one of the, the good times, you know. Those are the days, right? The, those, noon, those noon classes. Oh, man, and yes. People. The, everybody, right? Came it was everybody, the, you know. Professor Albert also was part of the group as well. You know, he's like one, uh, the, probably the first Americans to go there and and join us for the like the, one of the toughest toughest session. You know, everybody say because everybody don't don't experience even though you talk about it. It's like you had guys from all generations. You know, mm-hmm. of, of world champions that directly you know train at that time at noon. You know, so you have those guys. And you have the chance to train those world champions, you know, and be in a room with them is just, and at the time, you know, like, here the culture is different, you know, people are nurturing you to become, uh, in, fall in love with the sport, to enjoy the sport, to be part of the, 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 the community. Before, it was like, a bunch of world champions grinding hard, and whoever in, in, is on in front of them you can get, you know, the full yeah, speed. Yeah, I always say it's like a, it was like a fight, the fight club, you know. It's fight club, yes, exactly. Like the only the tough survived and you were like weeded out if you didn't have what it took. You know? Yeah. You just don't come back, right? Don't come back. I remember that. It's funny because you say that. Because I had this guy from my high school. He find out that I was. Jacqueline would stir it up say, you know, the you know, call you Frosha, right? Yeah, I was like, you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no character. Well, that's Frosha. What's it's that? It's like, uh, don't be uh, scared. Sissy. Sissy, yeah. <laughs> Don't be a sissy here. Not here. There's not a place for sissies here. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no, he will not tolerate, right? Black and white, yeah. Yeah, for him, it's straightforward. Be like, and he used to gay too, right? He used to gay a lot of people. Like, yeah. He's good instigator. I think I learned a lot from him from in that aspect as well. He remember one day I was there in a change room, right? Because I took a little bit longer because I didn't want to be part of the warm up. And he said, like, guys, Sam say you all you guys like guys suck. Everybody looked at me. It was like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill this guy today." <laughs> I was like, "I didn't say that." I was trying to get. I was like, "I didn't say that." I was like, "Well, be a man and own it." And I was like, "I didn't say it." <laughs> you know, he used to get things like that all the time too. You know, but it was part and of the came challenge. And you came in late, so it made you seem like you thought you were better than everybody. Yeah, kind of yeah, the yeah. idea. So he's already. You know, instigating everybody to, to go He's after. He's playing him. some art of war with you. Yeah, he did. You know, he, you know, he did it many times, and I think I'm thankful for that because yeah. it made me tough. You know, because I mean, you know, the, the the environment there, if you don't have the certain type of energy or you don't have a type of personality, you not you know you not last. You know, I was just talking about remind me here about my friend from high school. He realized, oh, same strange jiu jitsu. So he he went there. To train with us, mm. he was a, like a at more time. like, at the time he was like, you know, in my high school he was like a more like, um, you know, the popular kid, strong, you know, had all the the qualities to, to be the, the most popular. He was a really popular kid in high school, so in there I was like, I mean, I wanna see, I'm gonna go there and smash Sam. He thinks it's tough and he's taught jiu jitsu. My friend, he barely lasted the for the 
the half of the class. He was already like, it was hot, you know, Brazil is hot and there's no AC. And he's inside that gi was thick, thick, you know? And he's like, man, this is rough. I was like, yeah, we just started. <laughs> and then he come to roll, you know, with us. And in the end, he want to roll with me. And I triangle him. And that was it. He never came back. Why didn't you stop? You know, the, yeah, guys are heavier than you. They were always, I remember, you know, I remember you, like, the guys are big, you know. And I they, they put many they, times. They, 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 go, yeah. they went to, like, you know, because you were good, me, yeah. too, and you'd, all, you'd always, you're always crafty, you know. You know, you'd always come up with, like, these, you know, these slick moves and, yeah. you, you know. know. Especially in the beginning, you know, like, uh, I suffer a lot. You know, a lot of, a lot of I mean, nobody take it, took it easy on me. I remember Pedrinho, remember Pedro Carocha? He's like one of the, I don't know if you remember him. He was a, he was a good dude, but he, the first class, I mean, first class ever. I finished my intro class, you know, he's showing me about jujitsu. He's like, hey, little guy, do you want to roll? I was like, well, I guess. So I'm going to roll him. He whooped me so bad. Arm bar like me too many times. And I finally told him, like, I don't think that you are, I'm helping you with jiu-jitsu here, or you're helping me here, because I'm just based length and armbar, mm. left and right. If you come bull fight me, at the time I have no guard, I have no clue. So you bull fight me, and you barely armbar me, like, I don't know how many times. And then I was like, man, I don't think this is helping me or helping you. Mm. I just told him, and he's like, are you a pussy? And I was like, <laughs> And I was like, no, man, I just think I'm not learning anything from this. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so now is the time you're going to make a decision in your life. You're going to be a pit bull or be a fucking pussy? I was like, well, I'll choose to be a pit bull then. You know? That's straight up, right? <laughs> straight, straight up. up. It was like no sugar coating, nothing. And then that he point. He paused, looked you in the eyes. He looked me in the eyes and, and like, asked me. And that was a defining moment. Defining moment. And then I, my mom said, I mean, I, my arms are so sore. Because I tried to push him, and I don't know. Imagine you, you're yeah. 150, 110, 150 pounds. Try to push somebody that's 170 pounds. No, for sure. Blue I remember. Belt, I remember. Nationals. He he was going to nationals already, and I felt like, man, I cannot do anything. And then when I got home, I was so sore already. I mean, I think I, I burned myself out so bad. Then I was like, I'm not feeling good. I told my mom, I'm not feeling good. You transferred, you felt like you had the flu. <laughs> yeah, I, my immune system dropped. I was like, man, I'm going to get sick. And my arms are like, I, I went to the, I want to take a shower. I could barely turn the, the faucet. And I was like, Jesus, man, it was rough. And my mom said, why are you doing this to you? To yourself. Uh -huh. To yourself, you know? And I was like, well, mom, I'm going to have to keep it going. Because they she asked me if I was going to stay or not. And I said, I'm going to stay. So I'm going to have to stay. I mean, when I win, maybe there is a possibility because I'm going to finish winning. I mean, I mean, they cannot say anything. But at, not at this time, point in time, I cannot quit. I told her. And every day she asked me, why are you still doing this to yourself? Because I'll get home if I put ice on my arms because it's so like, basically, you know, when you get super tight you know and i ice my arms ice everything and and the next day i'll eat a lot and i'll just crash and because it was summer break you know so you know i was like take advantage of that i'll have a good a lot of rest i'll just you just study do you know my study and all that but um i mean that's all i did and when did things get easier for you easier oh man i think after a year Mm. I think that when that's when I felt like okay, um, I mean when I got when I go started, competition, started to develop your, your the games. competition for me in the gym, I was always rough for me, you know. But at the competition, I compete a, a month after because I told myself there's no way somebody's gonna kick my ass like they're doing here. So I joined the competition a month after I joined jujitsu and I won. Mm. That's when everybody started paying attention to me because everybody before yeah you were winning everything huh I was start I was like just who is this guy not here what is he doing here you know what I'm saying because nobody like and that's the reality you know and in jujitsu it's just like the it's the jungle you know if you're you is a, you're a predator or a prey and there's no such a thing back especially back in the day you know mm. so you a prey everybody's just eating you alive nobody pay attention to you until you start you know, hunting your own meal, you get stronger, and, and 
you know, take somebody, you know, have to beat somebody in the pack, you know. It's just basically like the, I look at my dogs, you know, I have a pack of dogs. When I look at them, it's like, that's my, that's jujitsu right there, you know. They're always fighting for that, to, who's going to be the alpha, you know. Mm. So my alpha doesn't even not have to do anything. He just look at them and they know their place, you know. Mm. The other ones, they always fight for the, the, for the hierarchy, you know. It's interesting though, right? Because uh, you're a rooster weight, right? You compete at rooster yeah. weight, and everybody's bigger than you. To be alpha, I mean, that's the power of jujitsu, right? Yeah, you know the. It's alpha like it's it's you know the people that are paying attention to you. Like, how does that? You know, I remember that too. It's like it's not it doesn't doesn't really match, right? No. How like your eyes? Like, how does that? How is that even possible? The things like I tell people all the time. You know, there's a famous quote. It's not the size of the dog. Hmm. You know. The fighting size of the dog that matters, you know. And I felt that was for me, it was just exactly what happened because I will get myself, I mean, whooped by the same person for I don't know how long. I remember Draculino, I'll pick the guy that beat me the worst. Mm. And at the time it was Ivanzinho, you know, Ivanzinho, cara de mm. <laughs> And he'll. Sampaio, be, yeah. Yeah, Sampaio. He's, he'll beat me. And I, he was really nice to me because he rode me for like hours. Mm. I mean, he stayed there with rode me, and he whooped me, but I, I didn't care. He thought it was funny. He would laugh about it, you know? And some other people, of course, but um, I would pick the guys that beat me the most, mm -hmm. and I will go over and over and train with them. You know, I never, you know, Draculino one time, he thought it was like disrespectful because one day he put me to somebody that's not his stuff, and I was like, I didn't come over here to train. You get easy train. Don't waste my time. What would you say to somebody that? Uh, well, it depends on what the person's goal is, right? But yeah. for you, it was to be like become the best, right? That was yeah. your goal. Yes, for sure. At the beginning, I already told the guys. You know, it was funny because a month of jujitsu, or less than a month, they, I invite all my friends mm. to come watch the fights at my house. You know, I think Hickson was fighting at the time, and he fought. You know, you watch it, you know, and then it was in the morning. I think it was Saturday morning because it was in Japan. You know? mm. So it was like awesome. pride, pride yeah, days, huh? Pride days. And um, so then after that, I was like, hey, guys, I have some jujitsu tape here. If you guys want to stick and watch, stick around and watch. And they're like, OK, let's watch. So we're watching the finals of World Championship. I mm. think it was the 2000 at the time. OK. And we were there just talking. And I was like, man. I want to be there one day. I want to be a world champion. I want to be there. I want to be like in front of everybody fighting for the world championship title. You visualized and you I've, set the goal in your head. Yes. You knew what you wanted. I knew what I wanted and I told him, I'm, I'm going to do this. Everybody started laughing at me, mocking me. I was like, man, you cannot even beat me in the gym. You are gonna be, you're going to be a world champion. I was like, I don't care, man. I have to do it. I feel like I, I can do it. So, and many times, you know, when I'll be going, because I always... Always, if I, I was home resting, if I was mm -hmm. not home resting or studying, I would definitely be at the gym. And my brother would mock me all the time. He'd be like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? You just go there? Because you train too, but he's like, man, you just do jiu-jitsu. You just hug men all the time. You mock me, you know? I was like, I'm not world champ, be like a world champion yet. So he would just watch me leave in the house and train jiu-jitsu. Even like carnival, mm. weekends, you know? Because in Brazil, carnival, it's like a week of people partying, know, partying drinking, yeah. and doing whatever all day long, every day. Yeah, I never go. I, I mean, I didn't go. I was like always focused. I was like, man, I might go, I'm always seen as opportunity to get ahead of my peers mm. oh, in my competition. What, uh, where do you think that, uh, you know, the drive comes from? You know, like you, we spoke a little bit about your, your parents and stuff. Like, where do you think that, that comes from? Like, as a kid, um, I don't know. I think like I, I, I'm always being a person that visualized things mm. and wanted to be a certain. I always want to be a world champion, and I came to the United States. I want to have a gym and a family, so forth. I, 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 I'm, I get really into a, a, a goal, and I, but I think like the drive itself. I think I'm from my dad. I mean, I always my dad was like uh, was a hero to me. My dad came. From being poverty, you know, poverty, uh -huh. yeah, he was super poor, and he become became successful, you know. And I mean, he never, he didn't 
He was like, works for the IRS, right? Yeah, he works for the IRS as an auditor. Yeah. You know, to be that in Brazil is really hard, you know, because mm. you go through a test, and these tests have thousands and thousands of people that is trying to get your position, you know. So he did it, you know, in a, in a time, I remember that my dad told all the time the story. My dad had like two undergrads and one master's, you know. And my, my mom's family was successful, and my dad was really poor. And they would, they would make fun of him. It was like, man, you study a lot, you do all this, you're still poor. What are you doing? And he, he just quiet and grind it, you know. He kept quiet and grind it. Use that maybe as motivation, motivation right? Motivation, you know. And then he became an auditor from the IRS, and then the first thing they said that, well, now you're set for life. You know, because once you get to a government job in Brazil, you know, like especially like you go to a task like that, like an auditor or a judge, whatever might be a, f a federal job you get, mm. you, you're, 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 you're set, you know. You're set. Going back to the tech, going back to technique, what are some tips you have? You've been teaching Barambola now for m many years, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so what are some tips uh, for uh, somebody that doesn't play invert like barambolo things you know what are some tips for like, them to get uh, going some concepts maybe i believe that i mean if you believe in you want it to to do certain thing you can do it you know bottom line it doesn't matter what bike type I, you have because i mean my bike type is not the best for the open guard everybody say you know you have to play half guard but i, I did not let that stop me okay mm. um so once you put that in mind that you want it and you practice enough right you have the baby bolo you no know? baby bolo you don't need to necessarily go inverted you can go i mean because now my back is so tight i just do majority of the time baby bolo and crab right i don't go so much of an on the inversion mm -hmm. so you still be able to be really successful with the big back takes from baby bolos you know you can knock the guy down come to a top position then re-roll which is not going to put stress on your back or on your neck whatever you should mm -hmm. not roll on your neck also and the most important thing is is a, you just about control, right? If you think about it, the grips and everything you're doing in jiu-jitsu to acquire control over your opponent. When you control their hips, right? So I'm set up my grips to apply control on you so I can control you better. Then I want my ultimate control is gonna be your hip. So when I go mm. to De La Riva and I get my hooks in, I wanna try to control your hip. So when I connect my, my hand, get the bug grip, bring you near my hip, what I'm trying to accomplish is build or control your hip. Once I control your hip and you connect to my hip and my chest connect to your back, now I, I have your back. That's essentially what you're doing to, the, uh, to take their back. And De La Riva is also momentarily you use a transition between your open guard to the back take. You know, and then the bearing bolo is just a catalyze that back take mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because you know it's so successful. We're so successful with that because everybody does it. You know. Yeah, you know, I remember going to the Abu Dhabi Pro. Like, um, I don't know what year it was. Maybe like twenty. When I actually went to Abu Dhabi, twenty maybe ten something like that. And the Mendes brothers and all the all the those oh, guys. Yeah were inverting right and uh even against even against the guy big mac you know the yeah the super heavyweight guy i forgot who who, who went against him Mendes. Mendes, yeah that match he did hit and i was for sweep yeah yeah and i remember like man that's a lot of pressure on the back you know yes i was think i wasn't thinking like that but now i think about i still remember that because there's like so much pressure on the back you know like What's the, what's the, what are your thoughts on, you know, inverting in those positions, the pressure on your back versus like close guard and, you know, like a longevity game, like uh, somebody starting out maybe later in life, like a master, master guy, you know? Yeah, I believe that you can play any game, you know, mm -hmm. you have to be smart how you play the game. It's just like what I s would say now today, as you get older, you get wiser, you get smarter about how you train, how you approach things, you know? So we know there's sometimes the competitiveness and excitement about certain things are gonna take you to be a little bit more like um, reckless about some techniques, but you always have to think about the longevity, just like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. How you see yourself, and you wanna see always like anything you do, you have to have a goal. So when you go to a gym, you say, what is the ultimate goal? Okay, I wanna be a black belt, I wanna be able to have like a healthy lifestyle. 
or I want to do a master worlds, whatever. You have to know your goal. Then knowing your goal you, is just give a direction where you want to go. So from there you can mm. put like, okay, to be a black belt, I know it can be three times a week I can come and train and have a good train session. And, okay, if to be a black, uh, maybe just a, you need to be a black belt, but just a local tournament champion or a national, whatever might be your goal, okay? And then you have to put more time. Because anything you just taught me is like this. You want to be good at something, put time. Before jiu-jitsu, I had the concept, the misconcept of talent. That's all you need to, you have to find your talent. Once you find your talent, you're going to be, that's when you're going to be successful. Well, jiu-jitsu didn't change my mind on that one. Because I suck really bad in jiu-jitsu at first. <laughs> you know, I really got like uh, smashed because, I mean, I just was too small. I didn't know what I was doing. And I was just mauled destroyed every single class and then but they were always fighting you me you were destroyed yeah every single class very much like and destroyed where you're icing your elbows and your ice body and parts yeah. I mean I was at Eric Von at the time giving everything you have just everything to be able happened. to show up for the next class the next yes. day and so Eric Von thought it was really funny because it was so little but it had so much fight in me you know, find this, <laughs> this big, he was like, he thought it was amusing. Look at that little guy. Look how f hard he fights. He does not quit. That's what you tell me. And that would call his attention. And then when I won a tournament, that's what caught him even more his attention, you know? And then at that point, it was a ch game changer, my confidence and everything. But so it doesn't matter. What I'm saying is it doesn't matter. You, there's nothing in life you're going to do. You're going to be really good at first. You have to pers be persistent, you know? You have to love enough, be passionate about it, and want it bad enough. How bad you want something, that's how you're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be successful or anything. Set your goal right, like you said, and, yeah. and stick with it. Yes. Be persistent. Be persistent, stay, yes. Stay the, stay the course. Yeah, exactly, you know I mean? I mean, when you, your story too, you know, when you, when you tell people, oh yeah, when nobody believe in much of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you went there to Brazil, you know, you here in America, this good life, you know, everybody wants to come to America. You go to Brazil and you go there in this place that's crazy, you know, like a bunch of maniacs trying to kill each other. You know what I mean? It's, it's not for everybody, man. It's not for everybody, you know? Wondering what am I doing here, right? Yeah, what I'm doing, <laughs> what here. Am I doing here. I'm regressing, <laughs> you know, I'm in the first world country, you know, all these possibilities. I'm going to Brazil. But, you know, it is still about your your determination, you know. I set, I set my goals. I set a set goal. goal. you know. I know I want it to be, I want it to be, I want it to be the best. And I want it, that's where I have to go. Exactly. And that's what, that's, I stayed true to it, right? Stayed the course. Exactly, you know. And that's all a lot about you, you know. So, you know, it takes a, I tell people that a lot of things in life people can do. But it takes a special type of person to do jujitsu. You know, and stick with it, because you know this. I, you know this. You run a school. How many people gonna bite your door, and how many stick with it? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can try and motivate them. I mean, you know this because you, when you, you know, you teach. You not only teach a technique, but you're motivating people. You're trying to inspire them. You're trying to make them excited about jujitsu, and you call them. You send them message. Hey, man, I miss you. How is everything going? You do everything, but it is not in them. What are you gonna do? You're gonna be no. This is not for me, right? I mean, the, our job as a coach, you know, to everybody think, oh man, be a coach jujitsu. That's pretty easy, you know. You've been doing it for the longest time. Yeah, yeah. You want to do your, but you, we do our best, right? But yeah. it's their choice, right? If, exactly. Uh, it's their choice, right? If they want to keep going, but that's why we we do our part, but we can't make them show up, right, for the next class. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. So how how did you come to the U.S.? You know, because I remember. Us hanging out. The last time we really got to hang out was yeah. when you came to when I was training MMA at the Team Quest. Yeah, and uh, I think I don't know. I'm not sure when it was, but you came and you you ended up staying for a little bit longer. Maybe you came for a tournament. Yeah, I stayed a little bit longer. And you stayed, yeah, and you stayed. You ended up going with me over there. Yeah, and then the Ryan Parson, who was like, uh, you know. <laughs> MMA manager, right? Yeah, I think he was, was like, so funny. He was man. trying to recruit you to, to yeah, fight, right? To he was, fight. 
in Japan because at the time, right, there weren't that many opportunities. Yeah, it was a lot of in jiu jitsu. Now there's so many professional events. You can make yeah. money. We have social media, right? It was a lot different back then, right? Yes. We didn't really have like phones. We didn't have ways to or to communicate. Communicate, and, yeah. And, 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 and market sell, ourselves, market right? Ourselves, sell or product, you know? right? No, you, you. So I don't know if you remember this. I remember because all ca- we would come to Brazil. So we were talking like in a change room. He's like, and I was we're asking cha- we're questions. Cha- we're, we're talking in the changing room. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, you know, in the change room, it was like in Brazil, it's different because we had the sound and this is going on. And people basically, that's what you're going to get mad sometimes. Sometimes you're, you're getting ready for the class and then you just start chatting with your friend and then you just like lose track of time, right? So I was chatting with you, if you don't know if you remember this, but, and you're talking about, hey man, I have school, the school is doing well. It's like, man, my dream is going to the United States. Mm. And he was like, man, if you want to go there, man, you're welcome to come. I didn't have the visa yet. Mm. But we were talking about it, and I was like, man, I, w- I would love to go there and sp- spend uh, a couple months, man, just learning. Man, I, I don't remember. You, you came to New Mexico. Yeah. You came to New Mexico right, right before I moved. Yeah. So, and I was like, that was the, because, I mean, for me, I was like, man, I even told you, like, man, I don't even care if you pay me or not because I just want to learn about you know, because all is like, even in Brazil, you know, Joker Union is like a odd card, for example, you know, to be professional. You know? Brazil is everything is like, people are not as professional. Now it's getting better because it's people like basically mimic what they're doing here. In the U.S., because yeah. In the U.S. But we're all, just saying how we were lucky how Joker you know, yeah, right? He was, was always a professional, you know, back in the day, right? Back in the day, in the Fight Club point. days. I was showed up, uh, you know, uh, clean gee, right? Yes. The way he, the way he carried himself, super professional, you know. And at the time, I remember that that was one of the reason that um, never told him this, but like that's one thing that actually brought me to 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 the to train with him, because at the time, you know, it was like I felt like the instructors were there; they were phenomenal. Eric Van was phenomenal, but there was no punctuality, mm. you know. Even even after certain point Jacqueline left I've I, uh, I went there there was no punctuality man mm. and I was like Jacqueline was like noon okay you talk for 5-10 minutes and we start training you know we start the class at noon and that for me is was like what I needed because I had to go to to, to school to school and everything so I need my 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 structure everything structured properly so that's one thing plus the, the hard training you know beyond that so there's a lot of things and I knew all was like extremely professional. He was really good businessman. I was like, man. They go, ow. They call it ow. Yeah. Like ow. Yeah. Ow. They don't say the the L like a, they say yeah. like a U. Yeah. Ow. 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 That was how everybody called you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time, right. Uh, and like the dogs, they bark, right? Yeah. Wolf, wolf. But there they say ow, ow, ow right? So yeah. ow. <laughs> everybody said ow, 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 crane. So everybody's like, man, he, you know, so I knew it because I heard. I was like, man, I have to learn. I have to learn about that. Because mm. I, I wanted to know how to, you know, for one day I want to have a gym. You mm. know, if I go to and say I want to be professional, I want to be like. So anyhow, that's one thing that led me was to have a, a contact. Of course, you know, we we know you help each other, you know. Mm. And when you went to team quests and everything, it was a great experience. You know, it was funny because I remember if you don't know if you remember, but I think I had a you had a sinus and I got I got a sinus too. Remember sinus that? infection. Sinus infection. Okay. And man, that guy was pushing us, and I don't know if it was. I told my my students this story because that one shows a lot of heart, you know. Because I, I had a sinus infection, and I, I had a because the, the time of the year, and I had a sinus infection too. And we were doing condition, you know. And this guy knew we were sick, right, Ryan? And he kept t- asking us, telling us about, "Are you guys ready to quit?" And that pissed me off so bad, and I think pissed you off too because you get like, you know, change your whole like your eyes change, your your expression change, and he kept asking us that. He kept telling us like, "Are you guys ready to quit? I know you guys are tired and sick." And then like, I remember that it's kind of nasty to say, but I have like a lot of like, like, a lot of stuff in my nose, you know, flam, like yeah. phlegm. And I was like, I'm gonna just blow my shirt, took my shirt off. So I'm gonna f it quitting man you stop fucking me asking this shit i got so upset so i'll go as long as you want me to because remember they had this other time mic yeah yeah pain 
it was so painful. And then, you, man, you kept doing these things. Like, for, I mean, we did it for like, I'm not joking. We did it for like over f almost an hour of that thing. And I think you, you was go that day. Because I remember that, remember saying, Sam, don't worry about it. This is going to be only 30 minutes of a workout. And I think he felt you were sick. He kept going over 30 minutes because I, I was looking at the clock. <laughs> so he kept asking us all the time. And I, you got so fired up. And you kept like going just autopilot and then for us tell us what type of person mm. you know we are you know in the sport because a lot of the times you know you have a type a you know that people that doesn't matter how hard it is mm. they get upset but they're gonna move forward mm. but there's some people get upset and just quit you know what i'm saying and that day i i knew that we establish you know like a a bond there because we both were like not feeling good, you know, and that guy kept pushing us to see how far we can go. And then at the, then he actually said, "Okay, guys, it's time." I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, it's all blurry. <laughs> 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 I just what I remember is that he was trying to recruit you because in those days the UFC didn't even have like the lightweight, lightweight divisions. Yeah. Like they got rid of the light, the one fifty five, the lightweight division. Yeah. Even the only I had like middleweight and up. Yeah. And you were like, man, you weren't even. You were like, you were like the lightest weight. One thirty five. Yeah, yes. uh, maybe right. Yeah. And so he was like, yeah, when because you were doing pretty good, right? Considering yeah. you know, but uh, he was trying to recruit you to go to j fight in Japan, right? Yeah. And then uh, and then Dan Henderson was uh, sponsored by Affliction. Yeah. And they came and they gave, they brought up like boxes of all the stuff. And back oh, in those yeah. days, right, Affliction was like so expensive. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I got a bunch <laughs> of stuff. You got a whole suitcase like a, of stuff. I was like, man, I, I actually. <laughs> I just remembered that you know. I wore that thing forever. <laughs> I think those things. Were, Every time I saw you for years yeah. after, you had like Affliction, affliction. stuff on. <laughs> hey, I could I could tell those things could actually chase me around too because I already wore them so many times. <laughs> it's all I would wear, you know. Uh, man, those some good times because yeah. he would come in with the box and just give us a bunch of of, uh, of affliction. And yeah. that time it was like I remember looking in a, at the time eBay. It was like, I mean, the shirt was like a hundred something dollars. Yeah, it was man. crazy. It was, it was crazy. crazy. If you could get it, right? It was like very rare. Very rare, yeah. yeah. If you buy it on eBay, right? Like yeah. People would bid for it and stuff. I remember my son was like, I don't know, maybe like a year, year and a half, something yeah. like that. You know, that was yeah, awesome. it was crazy crazy that's, that's cool man as time goes by so fast yeah man. and then where did you go after that so that was that your first time in the u.s yeah so i ended up going back you know for mm -hmm. a short period of time you know because um and then and then i went back to palmdale you know i went there to palmdale to palmdale yeah Okay. With Kazaka. Oh, no way. Oh, yeah. Dude. Oh, that's right. I remember that. So Kazaka, Drakulin said, hey, man, go with Kazaka. And it was, was crazy because uh, Kazaka, Kazaka was a phenomenal guy, you know, but he has a good, he had a, he has a good heart. But, you know, he, he, he's, he's a little bit off also, you know. Um, and I remember that it was like we were training, you know, like we were training. And you finished training, and Bombo was there, you know, and it's like, and then Bombo went and laughed, and then I was like, man, I need to go, I want to go home for Christmas. You know? mm. I was like, man, I want to go home for Christmas. Like, no, you can't. You have to, to stay here. I was like, no, I'm not, bro. For Christmas. <laughs> it's like, I have to go, bro. So it was like, he didn't want to let me go to, for, the, to anywhere. He didn't want to go to, because at the time, uh, Piano, those guys, they were staying there in Santa Ana. Yeah. And I want to go to spend on him or spend with my family, but I want to spend with my family. And he's like, I think he even hide my passport. <laughs> it was crazy. And then after that, you know, I went, I think I went to Brazil. And then after that, I, I came back to the States and I spent with Draculino. With Draculino, when he was first starting, right? His yes. school. Yes. Yeah. You stayed in the apartment and stuff. The apartment with him, yeah. It was awesome. Uh, it was a great experience, you know, uh, because I mean, a lot of times, you know, uh, it's like um, you don't realize, you know, because coming from a different country, you know, you did the same thing, you know, come from a different country, like you're taking a risk, right? Mm -hmm. It's tough, man. It's kind of scary at first. Big, big you know? culture shock. Culture shock, you know, I learned so much. It's so different. And people say, you know, it's You didn't different. speak English at the time. I remember when you came for them in May, when we were spending that, you know, you didn't speak English. No, oh, my English was not you, good. Maybe a couple of words. Yeah, and I was... 
super shy and yeah. conscious about yeah. like yeah. speaking and i was like just not talk to anybody yeah. you know yeah yeah how did you end up in tennessee so tennessee was um i was at with draculino no at the draculino there in, t- in houston and um they contacted me to to come to go to tennessee you know flavio sent me an email say if i was available to go there and draculino i was helping draculino i was two months there already mm. And I want to stay with Draculino, honestly. I said, Draculino, I'll stay here. He was back with his injuries. Like, you know, stay for, I stayed longer with him, extra month, because I want to help him because his back was injured, you know? So it's like, Draculino, stay as long as you need me to because I don't want to leave you here. Who's going to be teaching? Who's going to be helping you, mm. you know? So I was helping him out. And um, and I want to stay there. I was like, Draculino, if you offer me, you don't need to offer what they offer me. If you offer me, like, just enough, I'll stay here with you. And you feel like Samuel, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna be doing wrong, you know? It's like, I'm, I'm selfish on my part to, to try to keep you here. Because I, I, I had fun, you know? Like, we had a lot of fun there with Draculino, the gym there, you know? I created strong bond there with mm. the students. So I kind of want to stay, but he was like selfless, you know, and say, hey man, just go. And it's gonna be a great opportunity for you to start your journey, do as an instructor, you know, create roots, and, mm. and then you're gonna get well paid there. Get your visa, all that. So I was like, okay. So I went uh, up. So they did your work. They did your work for you. So yeah. Over there. So they, they were doing all that for me. So there was a. So it's did hard you go to, directly to Knox, Knoxville? Yeah. So I went straight to Knoxville. Um, at first, uh, I went there and um, I had a meeting with the guy. You know, and the guy gave me all this idea how it's gonna, how everything else is gonna be run, and end up being totally different. But you know, in the in the end, it worked out. You know. It was a blast. Like, I mean, that was, uh, had to be around 20, 2009, 10, yeah. 2009, maybe. 2009, yeah. So, yeah, 13, 13 years ago. Yeah. It was it was fun, man. I can think, like, um, you know, be yeah. able to adventure, you know? Yeah. Married, married, and family, family, and, you know, living the, living the American, uh, oh, yeah, American, American dream, lifestyle. Man. I tell people all the time, man, like, people don't don't understand what they have here in America no? because America provides you all opportunities to be successful in so many things you know and people take for granted you know and there's one thing I'm I, I'm I told I'm open about it like one of the America is one of the most welcoming and friendly place they can op- with open arms accept you and let you follow your dreams and you become successful. Anything you want to do, right? Land, Anything, land of opportunity, really. Land of opportunities for sure. Man. Living in Brazil and different different countries, like you realize the opportunities that we have, right? We take oh, for granted, yeah, right? For sure. Being like, if you grow up here, like that you don't have in other places. Yeah, because you don't realize like, like how much bl- blast you are, mm-hmm. you know? Like the same thing, like our kids, right? They never know the, the, the struggle because we love them so much and we provide them anything they need, you know. And the same thing, I feel like people here in America, they not, not even can grasp how blessed they are because they never struggle. Yeah, yeah. You're asking me about Ryan, like whether yeah. or the manager, right? What yeah. he's been up to? Yeah, he's a good dude, man. That guy was a really smart guy. Remember that? It was first time I ever Ryan being, Parsons. Yeah, yeah. First time there being actually working with a chiropractor and I was like scared. When he did my that neck, first time you got adjusted, right? Make adjustment. It was the first time ever, and I'm still scared of that because of the neck. You know, I'm kind of paranoid about that. But he was really good, man. He was like a smart guy. He he would do pretty much everything. Do yeah. conditioning. He yeah. does like strategic strategies and yeah. Yeah. and everything. Considering right that he wasn't maybe uh, like uh, come up with that with that background, right? But he's been yeah. around it for so long. Yeah, he was uh, man. He managed a lot of guys to the you know to the UFC and. You know, Mola Wall, like a lot of the guys, you know, he managed them for a lot of years. And I think that's awesome. I think uh, I think he maybe just got up, became over, you know, and he has his uh, his kids. Right there. Yeah. I saw his daughter doing gimnastics and his folks among the family. Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure. I haven't I need to speaking. Speaking, I need to reach out to him and yeah. say hello, you know. Yeah, I see what he's up to. But last time I heard he was uh, just staying busy with his with his family. That's important, man. Yeah. Yeah. But he did a lot. You know, I, I stayed at his house. Right. He really took care of a lot of us, you know. Oh, yeah. I made it that. made it possible you know i remember i like went all in i, I you know he allowed me to stay at his house monday through wednesday on thursday i afternoon. remember that 
Thursday afternoon and I, I would drive home. There. Yeah, yeah, you stayed with me. Exactly. You stayed with him. Yeah. And then he came back to my house on the weekend. Yeah. I so you made that you spent the week with me and my 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 routine, right? Yeah, it was stay there and it was like it was go, 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 go. Training and recovering, right? Cold eating and eating. Training again. Yeah, studying, right? Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun. You know, yeah. you spent the whole week there. Yeah. MMA, just every, which is everything, right? It's pretty much everything. That's the toughest part, you know. Tell the guys, man, like, you already have a really good background, you know, and you have, like, a skills, you know. And all days, I think people have the misconception a little bit. He thinks that MMA is a martial art, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a mixed martial arts. They have the misconception, you know, that. And it's so much to, like, you know, remember that I myself, you know, was, like, learned so much, and I'm a... You know, I'm a black belt jiu-jitsu already and everything, and I feel like, my gosh, imagine if I have to learn everything. It's different, right? Even the jiu-jitsu, right, with the gloves, it changes it's things, so right? so different. So you, you have, have to relearn. Learn. Yeah. So yeah. you learn so much, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. It was a cool experience to just spend the time together there. Uh, yeah. It, and I remember that he came to me. He's like, man, you do doing MMA? He's like, no, man. He just came here to roll. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm just rolling. He's like, I'm just going to roll it out after. And he's like, no, 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 no. You're doing you're the class. You're training like, with this. You're here. You're going to train. And I was, like, <laughs> I was like, I'm just doing And we trained the whole week, yeah. And then the whole week, it was like, he, I got myself into it. Yeah, man, good times. Man, you you mentioned that you, uh, just to switch, like, switch a little bit, like you were into your crypto and stuff, right? Yeah, um, yeah I love um, it. Yeah, you're always studying and trying to learn and improve yeah. and NFTs and things like that. You want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, uh, so the past, like, I'm, I'm a person that when I get myself into something, I get really deep into it, you know? So last year, I mean, I've been doing crypto for the longest time, you know? Um, I'm not going to necessarily say the date and everything, with them, but it's been doing for a long time. But then now, uh, later, lately, I've been doing more in uh, like a little bit of NFTs and so forth. You know, and there's a lot of stuff in the network. Just trying to understand because it grows so much, mm. the whole network. Because it's like, a friend of mine told me like this, Samuel, you have to be careful to crypto. I was like, why? It's like, remember the, the 2000s, the boom, the internet, and a lot of the companies went under. And I was like, that's stick in my head. I was like, okay, I have to study this. I have to study this because I don't want to get myself in a position there. Like, you know, invest all this time and whatever, you know, in fact, you have invested in it and you see collapse, you know. So I was like, okay. So I spent, um, I've been like really deep into it, like understand whole in and outs, not completely, but really good idea. There's in and outs of every, each network. There's a lot of networks out mm -hmm. there. Uh, for over uh, over a year, you know, and and since then I've been understanding because I want to understand because once you understand, I've seen a lot of people on Reddit, you know, and I, I just ask myself on Reddit because mm. there's a lot of people there like ignorant and they don't necessarily understand the subject and you they just say their opinions, right? They just give their opinions and I was like reading them, I was like, like this is this is not insightful. Mm -hmm. So I want to get really into it. I want to trade. I want to do everything. Mm -hmm. So I ended up doing it like for a good period of time. So I got like into like all the, like the main net, the BNB and all the Polygon also mm -hmm. so forth. There's mm -hmm. so many out there, Tezos and there's a lot of networks out there. So I, I, I want to understand because once you understand that, they understand you like it's a bio system. Mm -hmm. you know? like, it's not, not something that a lot of people think, oh, it's just like stocks and can, can collapse. You have to have a deep understanding like anything. If you, so a lot of people are afraid of it because they don't understand completely right. Right. The, the the network, and I was uh, I was reading today. Actually, I don't actually reply much to the Reddit, and I told this guys, listen, <laughs> please understand the subject before I say spinning out things. You have to. You guys don't even understand the the, the concepts, the main concepts, the financial finance, mm. the you know, the economics, you know, the basic foundation of economics. So if you don't understand the basic foundation of economics, you cannot give your opinion about like, speculating the prices and things collapse. Everybody's an expert, right? Yeah, and everybody's the, an expert. I'm not an ex expert, but I try to understand the right, point right, that right, right, right. I'm not gonna go right. under. You know, you say go. You know, I don't want to have like, for example, a lot of people like, oh man, I have two bitcoins, for example, and oh, I'm holding to it, and then the other guy, man, you're gonna just crash it. I was like, not necessarily, right? Because you have to understand well, the whole. I mean, I I watch like a lot of uh, documentaries and and I trade it. I trade every single coin mm. because I wanted to understand 
the speed want to understand the the also about the, the speed of the transaction the speed of the transaction of the, of the, of the, of the on the chain for example if you send a coin to someone how long how long it take? takes so i was telling you about the phantom chain the phantom block yes. the chain it's like the fastest one yes so it just is. on that like that has and also the, also the gas fee for example. right it's super cheap too super on phantom cheap. so you want to look at those and you want to see this those things are really the key because mm. If you have, like, for example, some t now that's why the Ethereum is merging, and they're gonna merge now because they want to make it, like, of course, um, eco friendly. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to make it cheaper and faster. Right, because it's slow, it's expensive. It's slow. Some sometimes you're gonna Too trade. Yeah. It used to be way more expensive. Now it's actually dropped a lot of the yeah, fees. Yeah, that's good. Last last uh, two years it was like extremely expensive. I remember making a transaction. Makes you not want to do anything. Yes, for example, you have an NFT, for example, on a uh, Ethereum network, and you bought an NFT for fifty dollars. And depending on the time, if it was a peak, you pay a hundred dollars for a transaction to that buy it. The thing that's cost twenty dollars or twenty five dollars, yeah. you're paying a hundred dollars to. It's just to, a fee. Yeah. So the gas fee. So you, you you know you do art, you do you're showing me like the yes. you started doing jewelry during the pandemic, right? Because you're yeah. like yeah. But it's so so you talk about the NFTs, like you do some you do art, you create your own NFT, yeah, NFTs. Yeah, you can create your own NFTs. You know, today's pretty easy. You know, mm. so you want to do now a lot of people do the apes because it's kind of famous. You know, everybody yeah. go do there do digital apes, which is pretty simple. You have a lot of. Uh, programs you know like applications they can uh -huh. it's not hard and then you go to a, um to a network you know you choose a network whatever you want it can be like phantom for example if they have support for nfts so you mint them and then you put them on um the network and then it starts selling on whatever might be the this the the i call say bidding platform with the call that um, bidding auction. platform yeah auction yeah. yeah we can auction that Mm -hmm. So that's basically what I want to do. But it, it's like, it's fun. You know, it's fun because... I don't, I don't get it yet. But that's you know, it's like, it's like a supply, I want to hear supply, about it. It's almost like the same thing, supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, the main thing is like... That's like art, right? Like it's art. very subjective to... Subjective. Yeah. You want to do something like... That's the thing like... Uh, if, we, we, if you say, oh man, this guy make millions and make, this one make millions. It's like, well, those guys that there was, they were like prime premiers on a premier, uh, the first ones. You know the pioneers on 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 on, on NFTs, and they digital made something. That time it was really hard, and and have go through a lot of work. And those first arts, you know, the collection, because they're first ones, and they call the genesis art of the NFTs. The birth, uh huh. So that's when it started. So that's why it's worth so much. Like a lot of people, are like, okay, I'm gonna get this NFT here. We just made today. If it was a if it was a great artist, because yeah, some of the art like it's like terrible, right? Yeah, because the, the art itself is not that great, right? You know, what I mean, there's like you see a monkey with pixels, you know, that's basically what it is, you know. So, um, it's just the value of the as a collector, you know, because you are the first one. That's why they they bid some. I think some of them sold for 150 ether or something like that. It's crazy. It's insane, right? So yeah. that's why. People, the values in that, but there's a lot of good artists. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, you can have allow your gallery. Mm -hmm. That's where people get really excited because you can have your own gallery. So you buy NFTs and then you tell your friend to like, hey man, go check my gallery, and they go there virtually on your gallery and check your your NFTs. And it's pretty cool the aspect, you know. You people collect. Uh, there's some three dimensional art that you can can buy. There's some really awesome artists over there. You know, you can, and then you can just make your, your own museum, you know, of your art. And then people like me, and some people are really proud. They put them in their profile. What do you, OpenSea, what do you, what do you use? Uh, you know, OpenSea is one people like, like to buy and sell okay. there. There's another ones as well, depending on the network. OpenSea is the most famous one. Uh. So you can get a really good art and you can get a lot, a lot of artists. Majority of people go there, but there's like also there's this, I forgot the, 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 the link. There's um, one that you can you can make your own museum. Mm. It's pretty cool because you you make like you have like a uh, really museum. You know you you expose your arts there, and then it start and then somebody get click close and it rotates and mm. you get a really, really cool uh, lightning and shade. I mean it's pretty awesome. And that's what I like about it because I mean if you love art, 
and you love crypto, you know, you just put all together. And that's uniquely, there's some that are unique. It's all only you can have because it's mm -hmm. in your in your wallet. You know, it's encrypted in your wallet so people cannot have like access to it. So anything you bought then the chain, once you have in your wallet, it's The metaverse, to you. right? You were saying we're the, it, last, we're the last generation. Metaverse. Last generation that was out, uh, outside of the matrix. You're gonna be even more submerged to the matrix. I have a theory here, you know, I'm gonna throw out there, but just to let you guys know. The, the corona virus or COVID was a, basically a test, right? And see how, look at how smart it was. Like the, the metaverse got bigger and get more exposed. And now the Facebook also has a meta, which is mm. a metaverse to be released. Change it, yeah. And Bill the Gates name. already has everything set up. He said that everybody, like, everybody's gonna be meeting on a metaverse. That being said, what's gonna happen is, he's gonna have a, some sort of a uh, virus, whatever. People won't be able to travel as much, restrictions. And people is gonna be, and you already said, even said that, man, why you go out if you can go watch a movie with your friend on a metaverse? So everything is gonna be done with the metaverse. With the, you know, the Facebook is owns the, like the what's up, all kinds of mm -hmm. social media, Instagram, all that. Plus they own Oculus. So Oculus is the, what you need to them go to the metaverse. One of the things, so. right? So think about it, it's just a matter of time. And I think that's what the plan is. In so my, how does the Jiu Jitsu fit into it, you know? Is it, it's the, it's the thing that takes us out that takes us out of the, the, the I think metaverse. that's always going to be unplugged <laughs> right you're going to be like unplugged you, you pull the plug out when, yeah. you, when you start training yeah. jiu-jitsu so that's that's one of the solutions I believe that jiu-jitsu you know of course eventually they're going to find a way to do it on the metaverse as well but I believe that in my opinion jiu-jitsu would keep kept me like uh, sane actually during that whole process mm. of COVID because I mean, I had a small group of people that we get together and you talk and mm -hmm. you roll and have fun. I mean, it just kept me healthy. Every time I go home, you know, how are you gonna be healthy just stay home, not do anything, right? Yeah. It's, it's really hard. That's why I was doing, like you said, and we talk about like I was doing, I started doing engraving and doing, uh, I did a lot of jewelry, do like at the time we did over 150 uh, necklaces for to give to my students a, as a, a thank of a thankful for their support, be thankful mm, for their support, mm. and and that kept me busy. I cannot imagine if I would just watch TV, I would be miserable. I mean, that's why I think like in several gyms, I'm sure they were doing the same. Jiu Jitsu, it's like for me, what kept me like really healthy mentally, physically, and I, I mean, honestly, I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> because it was basically having a club when you with your friends and you roll and there was no traffic nothing yeah there was yeah. nobody in the street i yeah. felt like man this is the best time yeah i could go anywhere interesting for, times yeah for sure for sure not the best time but you know what i mean interesting times right, interesting times, right? <laughs> for sure <laughs> <laughs> well brother I'm, I'm excited to 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 learn to Spent time with you, like you know, you teaching and learning, and and the team to yes. do a lot of do a lot of the the delihiva barambolo, you know, uh, techniques and and your your way of of, of teaching it. You've been teaching it for a long time. Yes, uh, I'm a big fan, big fan. From from the mats to the tournaments to the just your example, you know, being a like being the smallest guy in the room and being you know like you said like the it's not the size of the, the dog in the fight, right? It's the size of the fight and the dog, exactly. you know? So, like, being that example, being that example, really, you know, uh, it's you, you, you've been an inspiration. So, thank you, man. Thank you for, thank you for, the for that. Thank you for your friendship. It's always, always, always fun hanging pleasure. out with you. Really excited to spend these days with you now. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I, I, mean, I know you forever, you know. I always, you know, in BH, where you, your professor is, is, you know, settle or the team. And I was always like seeing all, you know, black belt at the time it was a blue purple belt, you know, and watch them roll, you know, fierce, you know, it's like, because, you know, I don't want to say this, but at the time you always have a misconcept, you know? And I was like, man, this gringo is fucking tough as hell, man. Jesus Christ, you come bring the fight. He was like a dog, you know, he was like a pit bull. 
you know, he comes so hard. And I think that took, that took my attention the most about Al, you guys don't know this, but his feet are like hands. <laughs> he can grip with those feet. That's what it caught my attention. I was watching him rolling. I was like, Jesus, man, that guy can make grip with his feet, man. It's insane. You know, he's really good at crucifix and all that. You know, it's like, that's why, like, I always watch him, you know, learn from him as well. And he taught me a lot, you know, because I always not on and off the mats, you know, because, I mean, this guy's a grinder, you know. And anybody, you know, that goes to Brazil and, you know, leaving the United States, you know, can I imagine they come to Brazil and grind with the guys, you know, in a condition that I don't even know, not even close where they used to have, you know. And he, he became a world champion. He won main tournaments, and he did so much for the sport, you know. Like, a lot of the times, I mean, people, because everybody talk about Lovato and those guys, but, you know, I always one of the first ones, man. And he was like, you know, you can look at this gi here. You should, like, take a picture of the gi, the old school gi, with the American flag representing, you know. Jack Lennon team. Yeah. <laughs> BH. It, BH, you know, <laughs> represent America, you know. Yeah. Like, is is. People don't 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 realize, you know, and they should they should like, give you the what do you deserve, man, uh, the recognition, you know, and your inspiration on the business and every aspect, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Oops.